So the Kabbalists believe, right, there was two Jesuses, right? There was one, the, the serpent in the Garden of Eden was that Jesus. What are you talking about? I read John 3, 4, you say What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? No, because you're new yeah, he, said, he says he knows what it says, but he can't tell me. What does it say? Is it that he died for our sins, is the good news, and is the injil in that respect. Jesus is the injil, not a book. You're, you're making, you're making the fact that this serpent in the cross is carbalistic. Jesus refers back to this as a typology. The Bible says they can't. But they don't eat. Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah, there's a nice dialogue about the Quran and the Bible. Okay, it's should, it's we, nice, should we? Should we do? Uh, okay. okay. What do you want to do? The Bible. Says I don't know. The, the, the Bible was. The, the, the Bible All right, we can have a dialogue about it. No, the Bible was written by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Men were inspired, inspired by men. It was written by men, but inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, written by their hands. The only thing that's written by God is the tablets. Man doesn't have enough wisdom to write like that. Because man, no, divinely inspired. This tumbling block of God being God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Spirit, God, three in one. Holy Spirit. Yeah, and that's why Jesus had the power to, to resurrect from the dead. Yeah, yeah. He, he had the authority to lay it down and take it up, but also the Holy Spirit is referenced think as about the, think, think about resurrecting. You know when Lazarus died, yeah? yeah. yeah. No one he had the power him. to raise Lazarus. Yeah. So Lazarus was dead for three days, but why would you to understand it that Jesus raised Lazarus before yes. he even got there? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the Holy Spirit at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, yeah. See, you see the scriptures, the scriptures yeah. and the Bible. Me. The scriptures <laughs> and the Bible, yeah. you, Do you know why you follow me? Because she's got Follow the truth lies. <laughs> you follow the lies. That's why you're always following. I don't come he's seeking nice. you. Was he nice, sister? Was he nice to you? He's nice. He's nice. No. Yeah, he took it out of me this morning. Listen, he's got nice trainers on. That's all we care about. <laughs> 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 Are we going to have a chat about religion we seeing as that we're here? All Christians have. Yeah, they should have. We become born again. In, in the Bible, it says if you have the Holy Spirit, you can speak in tongues. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a, it's a gift of the Spirit. It doesn't not for everybody. If you drink poison, you, you won't you won't yeah. harm you. Yeah. You can hold deadly snakes. Are you right? Christian? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. no, he's a Muslim, and they can so drink any water because dead dogs don't make it dirty. No water is dirty because of the. Let me make a point. So what does the Quran say though? What does the Quran say? No, that's not tongues. Tongues. No, no, tongues is not recognized language. Let me just explain. No, no. I understand what you said. Yeah. So at Babel, men were cursed to speak different recognized now languages, Arabic, uh, whatever. So you're but speak about dead tongues? No, 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 no. I'm speaking about speaking in tongues needs interpretation. So it's not of the earth. It's not a language like. It's a God language. It's something different. That's a biblical language. But, but let me tell you how it, I don't know about tongues. that. No, but give, me it's it's no, give me a chance. Give me a chance. Let me speak it. Let me tell you how tongues started here. Yeah? The, the disciples and the apostles here, yeah? they were together in a place. place called. The Antioch or something like that, yeah, and they were praying and they were praying the in a language, spirit, in yes. a language that humans could understand, and the spirit of God fell upon them. Hello, and they started speaking in tongues in a language that they couldn't understand, but it had meaning. That's how. Also, that's how also, the curse of Babel was ended when the 500 saw him resurrected and the apostles went out that, and preached. Everybody understood these guys in their own language, even though they were speaking. Uh, whatever they were speaking, Aramaic, everyone understood them, even though they were from different nationalities. So that's like a reverse of the curse of Babel. So. But you know what? I want to thank you today because you gave me a challenge. Because now I believe God. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask him, pray, and God will give me that gift. Because it's part of the, the gifting of the, of, of, the, of, the, um, of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can interpret all languages. Yeah, that's part of the gifting of the Holy Spirit. But speaking in tongues is a fruit and a gift of the Holy Spirit. But that's one. Yeah, so there's healing. There's performing miracles. Prophesying. There's prophesying. There's doing common good. Yeah. There's nine in total. There's I want to make, make a point. Well. Can I make a point? But you can also, but the, the Holy Hold Spirit on, can, can, can interpret all languages. You can speak to me in a language I've never had, and the Holy Spirit can start speaking to you within that. I haven't got that gifting yet, but I'm going to start praying to have it. Okay, can I, can I make a point? Since you used it to kind Hello, of brother. Me with it. Thank yeah, okay, you for okay. that. I want to make, I want to make a point, Lord. brother. Yeah, listen to this. Listen, to this. listen carefully here, brother. You know, you know Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yeah? Sister, listen, listen. Hello, you know Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yeah? yeah? He's the only man, yeah, that died and resurrected. So resurrected means, I'm, I'm resurrected means, yeah, he came back to life. 
But he resurrected before, himself, before, the only one. Before Jesus died, here, yeah, he gave a prophecy. And he said, I'm the only one here yeah, that has the power to lay my life down yeah, and pick it back up. But, but that's not the point. The, point of the, the, the ultimate point here is Jesus Christ of Nazareth died and resurrected. No other man has got the ability to resurrect. And the reason why Jesus Christ resurrected is because he's coming back to this world yet yeah, to and judge no every religious leader. No, 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 no man's got ability to do that. Huh? God, by the way, yeah. huh? Jesus God, Christ God, is God, exactly. Right, let me continue now. Continue. Talk to me. Yeah, go ahead. So you said Jesus, no other man had resurrected, no. No, no, Jesus actually that's, doesn't say the power. Can I just clarify the verse? The scripture, though, is not that he has the power. No, let me tell, excuse me, sir. He doesn't, he doesn't say I have the power. He says I have the authority you know to lay down. No, it's not. And lift it up again. So. What did you want to say? What did you want to say? Through God, yeah? You said, you said, he is you said no other man yeah. Yeah. The camera. Uh, had the ability to resurrect. No and other man, no. No other man, yeah? Are you recording no, Are you recording no, Yeah, and over there as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you've got, uh, your, your belief is your perspective that Jesus rose from the dead. That's just and your eyewitness body. accounts. And, and I, uh, as a Muslim, don't believe that, right? That's so true. that's all perspective, right? Yeah. So now, but if we go to Osiris, which was a, uh, uh, a death, Greek god, death and resurrection. Uh, god of the Romans and the Greeks, right? Oh, no, it's an Egyptian god as well, Osiris. Osiris died and resurrected again. That's, that's their belief. So he was the star of the earth. But Osiris is a myth. Osiris is a legend. That story is not a real there. person. I've read about it. Jesus was a you might have read about it, but it's not true. Allah doesn't mention him. Allah doesn't mention him. Let me see. Let me see. But we're talking about religion and real people. No, there's not. No, it's not though. It's not. Sorry, I've got a camera over there and a microphone here, and I'm like. Jesus. Yes or no? Yeah. Every other human being in this world was born of a man of a woman, yeah? Hang on. Who else was that? Apart from Melchizedek. Okay. Sorry, I'm being filmed at the moment, so you can't keep excusing me. Adam was the first man yeah, to be created. That's different. If Adam was made from the earth, I'm talking about any other man yeah, that wasn't born from a man and a woman. No, no, don't tell me my Bible. Tell me the world. It's only Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. Jesus Christ was conceived of the Holy Spirit. The hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. And because Jesus Christ, hang on, hang on. Because Jesus Christ was born only of a woman and conceived of the Holy Spirit, yeah, that makes him God. Him. God came through. God came through Mary and she had the baby. No beginning. Just go in. Just go in. Yes, no, much, neither mother or father, no beginning of days, nor end of life. Just explain to them. During biblical time, the name Jesus was the, one of the most common names. Yeah, it was like John. It was everywhere. So the, the way we identify the real Jesus is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's how we call the real Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So you guys are calling Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, one of these other Jesus was just running around doing. Are you aware? You know, you know, are you aware? You know, uh, at the time of the Lord's crucifixion, when he was brought out by the king to be judged, there were out two Jesuses. Yeah. So one, Bar Jesus, one Bar Jesus, Jesus or Barabbas. Bar Jesus. Barabbas, yes. Yeah. That's what I said to you, it's a very yeah. common name. And the other yeah. one, yeah. they said yeah. Jesus, yeah. who claims to be the Messiah. Yeah. yeah. Not the Messiah. No. The one who well, they don't accept him. Yeah, they don't accept his claim. Because they were like you, they didn't believe in him. Wait. So they were like you, they didn't believe in him. We have two Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And I've just told you it was a very common name. No. Okay. So. So the, the teachings of the Bible, right, are actually teachings of the Kabbalah, which is no. ancient. No. Wait, wait, no. wait, Sorry, no. wait. No. Have you heard of Kabbalah teachings? No, 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 no. Wait. No. Let me finish. Let me finish. Right. So the Kabbalists believe, right, there was two Jesuses, right? There was one. The, the serpent in the Garden of Eden was that Jesus. Wait, um, wait. Now that's crazy talk, wait. though. Yeah, but I've Moses argued from the Bible or the Quran. We're not no, no. Kabbalists. Moses, we're not. Right? We're not. Because your teaching comes from the old. But the no. Quran teaches and that the, the Messiah the will, will, will be immortal. People no. who had the revelation and knew of the teaching of two Jesuses. So you're wait, 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 wait. No. Let me, let me finish. Jesus was a very right, Let's all man. let him finish because it's never going right. to So the point is, Moses had a vision of Jesus. If you want to Google it right now, Moses' vision of Jesus, see what pops up. And where is what it recorded? Pops up is, and then you uh, can apart get the from Google. Well. I'll, right. get, I'll get you the verse as well, right? So Moses had a vision of Jesus. You can Google it right now and see the image. The image is a cross with a serpent yeah. wrapped around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he held that a lot of the wilderness. Exactly. That was when they were in the wilderness. Right? 
and I, I believe it's our because we're bitten you know, by serpents. You know, Jesus actually. It was a healing. The Israelites were healed. Are you aware yeah. of the monk? Jewish, uh, I love how much you know the Bible, though. The Jewish, what does the Quran the say, Jewish, though? Uh, <laughs> the the Messiah will be a mortal, but they keep their eyes quiet. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. So, their belief is what? They have two boats, right? One stays in the temple. No, we don't. And the other one, oh, they're not us. Their this is someone else. I don't know this this why we're belief. talking about. But why you are you don't you want to talk about our belief for us? This is related to the two Jesus. I don't mind about two Jesuses. I care about two Adams. This is what they believe. Jesus yes. Barabbas was a crook, his was a crook, right? Wasn't was a Jesus criminal, was yeah? So you're saying and that Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, you're saying Yeshua, Jesus. the one who will save his people, who Gabriel came and said this is his name, Can you're I saying that you? dude, hang on, are you saying that guy was not tried by Pilate? Well, I'm saying, is it yes or no, well, though? I'm saying, as, as, as the young lady just said earlier, at the time, there were many Yeshuas. Jesuses, yes. Yeah? But are you, saying, Jesus, are you saying, are you saying the one right? who was Jesus crucified? Jesus talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Are we talking about my God? Are you saying he was tried by Pilate? But yes or no, I don't follow you. Hundreds of Mary. Excellent. Hundreds of Excellent. But the, the, the one who so I believe to be God. My point is what the Kabbalists believe. Right. That two Jesus. The one no, that no, was released was the goat that they have on the temple. Okay, right. The, Brilliant. And the other goat, the other goat yep. is sent to the wilderness. Yep. And what happens to that goat? Like a Yudas goat. The one who leads they, them to they, sacrifice. They, they wrap a red oh, ribbon around it. Yeah, and they send it to the wilderness for it to die. Excellent. And what they say is all their sin gets transferred to that goat. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. All the sins of the Jews get transferred to that uh -huh. goat. And then they sacrifice that goat. Got it, yeah. And then God accepts them. Yeah. I understand. Now my question to you. No, 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 that this is too long a point, Mr. Brown. Come on, man. That part of the Barabbas. Yes, but I'd like to not know the Kabbalah. Jesus who claims to be uh, of uh, the Messiah. Yeah. They say, uh, he the claims one, to be God. The one who claims to be Messiah. Yeah. The Kabbalists believe is that God that sent I don't care out what the Kabbalists wilderness. believe. No, it's irrelevant to what we believe. It's not irrelevant. We don't. It is. Because, because the Jews... The Jews had their original belief. Before That's lovely. The it. Jews are in error if that is their belief. Their but belief Kabbalists are not Jews. Ancient Canaanite beliefs. Now, okay, but who minds any of this? We're talking about Christianity. The trini the, the trinity. It doesn't matter. But don't you understand? Christ. Ancient Israel. You're Brother, arguing Brother, a straw Brother, man. Brother, None of us Brother, believe this. Brother, Excellent. Brother, Brother, Moses Excellent. Moses I don't know the element. What's your point? He what has no point. What you perceive, the Jesus you're worshipping. Ah, we're getting somewhere. Is actually the devil, the original serpent. I don't care. The Garden of Eden. Oh, that's and Moses had a Isn't vision it? of that's Jesus, Eden. your Jesus. And the vision he had was a cross. How do you know he was our Jesus if there were so many Jesuses Jesus running about? Is Jesus. We are the Jews. Jesus the Christ is coming back to judge the whole world. Yes. Jesus Christ was resurrected. He resurrected because he's coming back to judge the whole world. Yes. That's the reason why he resurrected. You've been talking a long time now. Let someone brother, reply. Brother, Let brother, so, brother, does, brother. so does the Quran. Yeah, hang brother, on a minute, Mr. Brent. So does the Quran speak of them as the chosen people? Brother, no, brother, Come on now. That's disingenuous. Brother, brother, no. brother, no. Brother, no. Brother, listen to me. Listen to me. Wow. No other religious leader resurrected in this world. Jesus Christ resurrected because he's coming to Judge, it's coming to judge every religious No, in the world. Melchizedek was not resurrected. Osiris, no, no. Osiris, you can find Jesus Christ is coming to judge It doesn't judge matter, we're talking about the Bible. Osiris, I'm telling you, they can't stick on the truth. You're, you're, you're arguing, I'm not arguing with you. Listen to me carefully. You hear my point? Jesus Christ is resurrected because he's coming back to judge every religious leader and the world in entirety. That's his role. Okay. Yeah? Right, can I just clarify? He, right, you spoke for a long time. Let me just clarify something. Are you trying... No, no, it's not because no other man... Are you trying to say that the... I've got a mic. Are you trying to say that the Jesus who appeared in front of Pilate, not the other guy, but the, the one who, um, you know, who was tried for blasphemy, that guy, and who said, when they said, are you the Christ, tell us plainly, that guy, are you saying he's not 
the Jesus of like the Quran, or he's not the real Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I know. You know. There's many Mr. Browns in the world, but you're the one. Yeah. Something here. Without Jesus Christ, Lazarus would not wake up. Would not wake up. With him, he would have remained dead. Nobody recorded his message. Are you saying the wrong Jesus went on the cross? What about the Injil? What about the Injil? Hold on. What about the Injil? Nobody recorded it. But what about the Injil that Allah talks about? Jesus the book is Jesus' Jesus book. Jesus the Arabic, the Arabic for good news is um, Injil, yeah, basically in a roundabout way. And Jesus is the Injil. Jesus is the good news. Like his death and resurrection is the gospel. In its, in a nutshell, that is it. That he died for our sins is the good news and is the Injil in that respect. Jesus is the Injil, not a book. Yeah, I pointed this way, by the way. <laughs> our sin. <laughs> okay, so your argument is basically that the wrong Jesus was on the cross. My argument, yeah. Yeah, okay. You know, just, just so Alan made it appear like, like that. It know, wasn't the wrong. I know you're talking about the Kabbalist, the Kabbalist irrelevant. Your argument ultimately is that Jesus on the cross was the wrong Jesus, yes? Okay. If that's the case. What a cheek. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so if your argument is that the wrong Jesus was on the cross, okay, now bear in mind you're using the Bible as your standard to appeal to when you claim that there were two Jesuses, and you're right, there were two people, Barabbas, uh, some people might say his name was Jesus, that is debated to be honest, okay, but if your argument it's ultimately, bar Jesus, Jesus, yeah, but if your argument is basically that the wrong Jesus was on the cross, you're using the Bible to argue that, but if you continue to read the Bible, you'll get to John chapter 19, verse 25 onwards, that says explicitly it was the right Jesus. Because if you read verse 25, standing by the cross, and ultimately, I want, you, I want to ask people this, whose opinion should we judge, yours today, or the people who claim to be there? Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, so of all people, she should know who was on the cross, his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, okay? When Jesus saw his mother, and his disciple he loved standing there, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Now, if this was the wrong Jesus, would it make sense for him to say to Mary, you are my mother? It wouldn't. So, so the logical conclusion is the right Jesus was on the cross according to the Bible because you're arguing from the Bible. So if you stick with the Bible, you see that Mary even spoke to her own son on the cross. And again, that's irrelevant. And again, that Mary, for all we know, that you, could you, be another in the middle Mary. Of the you, you can come next. That could be another Mary that was there. And no, it so just said, said clearly, Mary, Mary the mother, the mother of, Jesus. of Jesus. So Mary, the wife yeah. of so and so, Mary yeah. Magdalene. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. You agree with? Those people, One second, every time they were born from a Mary, there was a Mary, mother of Mary. Oh, hold on, hold on. So, 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 so also, city. so also, so also. One second. So when it says Mary's sisters there, okay, uh, you know the mother of who? Who is who is right. Mary's? No, no, Mary's oh. sister, who is she the mother of? John. John the Baptist. So when even his other relatives are there, and Mary Magdalene, his disciple, which if you continue to read, even if you want to argue, okay, that the wrong Jesus was on the cross, we know that Jesus Christ, who we believe is the Son of God, had a disciple called Mary Magdalene, when she was at the cross, was seeing, at the seeing him and at the feet of Christ, okay, surely she would also know if this is her Lord or not. These people who knew Jesus, saw Jesus, ex said, said this was in fact our right Jesus, even his own mother, you're arguing, and that would fit you're, in with arguing the you're arguing, you're well, arguing. Because if they didn't think it was Jesus, Allah is lying when he said it was you're, made to You're arguing account. against the people who are there. Perfect. Isn't that a fact in the Bible, there's two accounts for the time who picked up the cross. Either it was Jesus. We can go there, Simon we can go there. Once. Let's, go, let's, go there. let's go there, let's go there, let's go there. Let's go there. Jesus is the way well, there are four accounts, there are four accounts. Jesus is the way that we can go there. Yeah, 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 we can go there. We can go there. Brother, so Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's mixed mm -hmm. accounts. Sorry, brother, one second. Please. There are mixed accounts. We don't have 17 people speaking. No, but you're not more important than that. We're talking about that. Excuse me. Give me what you're talking about. Hi. Hi, brother. And the other thing is, the other thing is, in a Jewish custom, Nobody is sacrificed a day before the Holy Communion or whatever they have a holy day. Yeah, whatever it was. And the day after the day after his crucifixion was a holy day for but the, the Jews. Passover but the Jews were not hold, the angel of death. No, but the Jews would not hold, the Israelites because of the blood on the lintel, which is a precursor. No, no, no. But Passover, the, but, but, but the Passover in Egypt is a to can you explain to you then, bro? The Passover in Egypt, when God stayed his hand above the Jews, because he told them, take the blood 
blood of this lamb. So Jesus is referred to as a lamb in the future. Take the blood of this lamb, smear it across your lintel, and the angel of death will Can pass you by. Can someone Google for me so, a of Jesus? I haven't finished. Yeah, Mo haven't. Moses having vision of Jesus. Mr. Brown, I haven't finished. And just see what pops up. Right, anyway, so that is a precursor is that? to the... That, Moses having vision of Jesus. That is a precursor to, so the Passover that was taking place at the crucifixion was not decided by the Jews, it was decided by the Romans, and also the blood of a lamb will be used to stay off death, and Jesus, we are told in the Bible, defeated death on the cross, so that's the absolute connection with the Passover. And also, your argument was, a minute ago, so you basically abandoned the fact that it could be the wrong Jesus on the cross, now you're saying it's someone else on the cross, because you said that Simon of Cyrene carried the cross. The problem with that argument is you stop there. You stop at Simon carrying the cross. If you continue reading, you see Jesus takes the cross again and it's him who's crucified. And then it says Jesus drew his last breath on the cross. It doesn't say Simon of Cyrene drew his last ghost. breath. It says Jesus gave up his last breath. So you stop at the point where it says Simon of Cyrene carried the cross. Continue reading, you see it's actually Jesus on the cross, not Simon of Cyrene. And again, that teaching is Kabbalistic no, it's in not. belief. No, Look, it doesn't matter. This is what the Kabbalists believe. Look at it, bro. It's not cross important. For the serpent. It yeah, you see it? Cross with the serpent. Jesus talks about this. Do you realize that? You see that? the cross and the serpent? I see it. I know yeah. what it represents. See the cross well. and the serpent? Yes, it's yeah. a medicine symbol. So the Jews now, actually isn't it? believe. It was a cure so they had this for whole the Israelites who had been bitten by snakes. They would have two goats. There was no ritual. Aaron had so, doubt look, and Moses was so given divine instruction. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, the Jesus they have is not the Esau what we believe in. Of course at that not. Time, at that who time, you there were many Jesuses. Into, into clay yeah. The Jesus they so believe that they crucified. What, what, they say, what they say, what they say, you have to look at the Kabbalistic teachings. Because that's where it all comes from. Their teachings, their sacrifice. No, actually, but your Quran, but your Quranic account of Esau comes from the infancy gospel. So just uh, like let's go, let's go the, the Quranic uh, story of Jesus speaking, Isa speaking from the cradle, comes from the infancy gospels that were existent before Muhammad was ever born. Is that in the Bible? No, 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 it's in the it's a heretical text because it didn't oh, happen. Exactly. It's a Gnostic exactly. text. Exactly. So Muhammad, but no, because one you're, I tell you why, because you're saying you're saying if something exists prior, these Kabbalic writings or whatever, is that a heretical that, Bible? Where is it? Where is the the heretical infancy heretical gospel. Yeah, Thomas? 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 Sorry, you have the I'm just the pseudo gospel Matthew Thomas. Wait, I'm just saying that if it exists prior to the Quran, the it's not divine revelation. It, unless Jibreel read it and then came to Muhammad. Well, but he came point. to us. So he came to us. If you want me to help him. You can help him, that's fine. But now listen listen to this. Now look, you brought up the fact that the serpent about Moses seeing a vision of the serpent, this, that and the other, okay? If you read that account, you'll see it's much different to the way you explained it. And Jesus also talks about that serpent. Do you know what he says? Nobody. Oh, okay, let me, oh, she don't know what he says, but you're making an argument about the serpent. Okay, let me educate you. All due respect, okay? Basically, the serpent, uh, in, in, within the biblical theology, okay, we have something called typology, okay? The sacrificial system was a typology or a type of Christ, if you read Hebrews 9 and 10, okay? And also, the serpent being held up in the wilderness was also a type of Christ, in a sense, because as Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 14, Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him, so that everyone who believes in him, uh, excuse me, where am I, sorry. Uh, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. One second, one second. One second, one second. Let me read this again, let me read this again. Okay, just as Moses lifted up the serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Now what's the point of Christ here? He's not saying this is some Kabbalistic teaching we're borrowing from. Stop, I'm going to tell you, let me finish. Jesus isn't saying this is some Kabbalistic teaching that we're copying from. What's Jesus saying? He's pointing out that this is typology. We have this in the sacrificial system and we have it here. Jesus is saying, just as in the wilderness, when those who those who looked at the serpent in the cross and followed Moses, okay, and followed Moses, okay, they would be saved, okay, Jesus says, so too all those who, as they looked at the serpent in the wilderness, all those who lift up and look at the Son of Man, when he's lifted up, which is a, a uh, analogy of the cross, all who look to him on the cross when he's lifted up will have eternal life. So Christ is using, Christ is using this. Are you, did you just ignore everything I said? Okay, I said, I said, I said, this is a typology. I'm making up. John, John, John 3.14, did I just read that or not? This is ridiculous. One, one second. 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 One
second, one second, one second. You, sir, you can come next. One second. Look, listen. L listen to this again. John 3, 14. You're, you're, making, you're making the fact that this serpent in the cross is carbalistic. Jesus refers back to this as a typology. We have this biblical theology for typology, yes? according to Hebrews 9 or 10, okay? Now, one second. I'm getting to your point. Now, the, the, uh, the particular instance you're bringing up, the particular point you're bringing up in the wilderness when Moses held up the staff, what was that about in context? Moses lifted up the staff and says, all those who follow me, okay, follow the staff, all those who follow me will be saved through the wilderness, okay? Jesus says, as Moses lifted up the staff and all who followed that will be saved, as Je Moses lifted up the staff, all those who look to the Son of Man when I'm lifted up, will have eternal life. So he uses this as a typology. He's not saying this is some Kabbalistic teaching. He's using it as a typology to refer to the crucifixion. That's your understanding. That's what Jesus said. He said, okay, John 3.14, what are you talking about? I read John 3.14, it doesn't say What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? No, because you're linking... Yeah, he says he knows what it says, but he can't tell me. What does it say? Okay, you're linking... What does it say? Answer, I do. So just give me a chance. Tell me what it says. Right. You're linking John 3.14, right, to Psalms 91, and that's incorrect. I'm not linking it to Psalms 91. Right. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. I'm not linking you know this. I'm, talking I'm about? not linking this to Psalms 91. Right. I'm linking this Wait. to Exodus. Hold on, let's rewind. Let's rewind. You're talking about the death of Christ, whether he died or not, is that right? He's talking about the serpent being carbalistic. I'm saying that Jesus used uses the uh, serpent in uh, Exodus to refer to his crucifixion. Okay. That's the point. Have you read Psalms 91? I've read, I've read the Bible, yes. Okay. Yes. Right. I want to ask you who he's just talking about. No, no, let's stick with John 3.14. No, but this let's, is... Let's not go wait, to... Wait, no, hold on a minute. This is not about... This is in relation John, John to three, John John 3.14 is not in correlation with uh, Psalm 91. It's in correlation with Exodus. Okay. You're trying to you read, you're trying to add a context into it that where it doesn't belong. Uh, you, you never give me a chance to even talk. So how do you know what I'm going to say or not say? Because you're using Psalm 91 to refer to uh, John 3:14. I'm, asking, I'm saying you read I'm saying Psalm I'm saying John 3:14 refers back to Exodus, not the Psalms. Okay. So what is okay? What does John 3:14 say? You just told me you know what it says. Tell me. Okay, no, I'm asking you. Do you know what it says? Okay. I don't. Now tell okay. Me. So you lied. You said you know what it says. Just say what it says. You just hold on. You just told me. Okay, no, one second, one second. No, 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 no. I told you, the I told why you. I said that, hold on, let me qualify what I, what, why I said that, right? Because the initial conversation is about whether Jesus died on the cross or not. This is what I understand, or this is what the context of what I'm trying to. I'm summarizing the conversation, what you both are having. So I pointed to Psalm 91 because it's talking about Jesus. Okay, let me pick and up. The serpent. Let me well, pick up. On. No, one second. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 7. Yeah, right? No, no, we're staying with John 14, with John oh, 3. Why, why, because, why you, because. Thank you. Because you just because you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay. Because there, there is no trap. He's all due respect. He's dug his own grave. He okay. just. I dug my own grave. Go for it. Because you just said. Bury me you, there. Because you just said you know what Psalm. Uh, you know what John three fourteen says. I ask you what it says. You say I don't know what it says. When a moment ago you told me it doesn't say what okay. I said it says. So you're repeating so, the same what, thing. So what, so what does it say? Elaborate. Tell me. What does it say? You okay. don't know. So now so listen to what I'm saying to you. Right. I am contextualizing the whole conversation. Right. I am pointing out what you mentioned to him earlier about whether who died on the cross because you are disputing whether it was Jesus. He claims it's someone else. Yeah. So now, but well, what you're so doing, now, I'm saying, what you're doing is this. On a wider no, no, no. Scale. But what you're doing is this. We, we're having a conversation about John three fourteen and about the serpent lifted up by Moses no, no, no. on the staff. You one second. Many one second. One second. You one second. One second. One second. One second. We, we're always talking about that, okay? You have come here with this rehearsed script you've got here, thinking you're about to make I, I a point, no. and you're trying to put this into our context. This doesn't belong in our context. I rehearsed. Sorry. So I think you're just. So let me read to you what John 14 really says, okay? John 3 14 says this, okay? And this is what Jesus says. This isn't. You said a minute ago it doesn't say that. Just as Moses. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, okay? So that all who look to the Son may have eternal life. What's Jesus talking about? When was the only time Jesus was lifted up on something? On the cross. Okay, does it say that? Sorry? Does it say that? Yeah, it says all who look to me will be uh, will have eternal life. And if you continue, no, 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 no. one second, yes, it does say that. And, and if you continue to read throughout John's Gospel, Jesus explicitly says, I'm going to be crucified. No, no, no. Where is it saying? So he doesn't say that. I'm not saying he doesn't say that. I'm saying when you said that the Son of Man should be lifted up, right? Yeah. Where is he lifted where up? Where does it say that it's in relation to the cross? Sorry? Right. This is this is why I was trying... Say that again. Okay. I was trying to find something. Right, right. This is why I think I need to reiterate my earlier argument, right? In Psalm 91, 
Because we have not, no, hold no, no. On, wait, Stick wait. to John 314. Stop running. We can do one point at a time. Stick to three. Right, John 314. I, I understand what you're saying now. So John 314, you're saying where does it say that he's been going to be crucified there? Okay. John John 314 is talking about Jesus. is pointing. All who look to me will have eternal life when I'm raised up. When was Jesus raised up? He was raised up on the cross. If you continue to read the Gospel of John, the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Luke, every single one of them says he was crucified in the words of Christ himself. Right. So what, look, 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 what I'm trying to say is that you have just summarized John 3.14, right? To mean that it's speaking about someone who's going to die on a cross. Yeah. That's your summarization. Okay. However, the verse doesn't say that, right? It says, just as, hold on, let's repeat what you just said. It says, just as Moses, right? If you want to read it back again, took up the serpent, and so shall the son of, I'm just summarizing, if I'm wrong. Go ahead, correct, go ahead. Yeah. So shall the son of man be lifted up. Right? I could argue that that falls under the Quranic interpretation that God saved him. Hold on, hear me out, hear me out. That God saved him and God lifted him up. And that's the reason why I was pointing to Psalm chapter 91. Because in Psalm chapter 91, it says that God protected the Messiah and lifted him up. Now, you, on the other hand, have to interpret that to mean that Jesus died on the cross and therefore he was risen up. Can I jump in? You made your point. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, I haven't, but no, no. Don't. I don't have to reinterpret this. I can just simply read what's there because if you continue to read, okay, was, read, it, read it. one second. If you continue to read throughout John's gospel, Jesus was clearly crucified. Okay. Now, if you're going to say no, I can show you in where. The one context second. Of that? One, in the context. Okay. If you want to say the context of this fits with the Quran, if it fits with Did the Quran. Did you argue that? I can argue that. Yeah. If you're okay. saying that the context in John 3:14 fits with the Quran, okay. Then, if the, bear in mind this context fits, then why is it that if you get to verse 16, where it says, "For God so loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son," no, 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 no see, see, you don't like that. You can't, you can't take the whole context. What you're doing is you're arbitrarily picking one verse, saying this fits with the Quranic narrative. No, 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 no. Then two verses, one second, two verses later, two verses later, it calls Jesus the Son of God. Now you can't believe that because according, because according to Surah 5 and Surah 6. God has no sons. Wait, hold Jesus on. says, I'm the son of God. You can't agree with that, but yet you want to claim verse 14 for your own. You it doesn't work. No, no, I never said that. Yes, you did. First of all, you said it fits with the Quran. John 14 and John 3.15, the next verse, right? We c I can argue that that's an interpolation in two ways, right? First of all, right, in John chapter 3, verse 14, 3, 15, right? It says, so for God so loved the world. That's 16. That verse 16. 16. Yes, you're right. So if God, for so God loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Has the word begotten been taken up? Sorry? The word begotten, has that been taken up? The well, some, has it been taken Okay, so some translations will translate that only begotten son. I, I prefer the translation that other translations have. They will say uh, one, and, one and only son. Right. So it, it depends on the translation, it's, but the translation's still there. No. Yes. Begotten and only son are two different words. No, no. Listen, but the, what's the point? Of the, listen, words Wait, only... Hold on one, a one second, one second, one second. Words only have exactly. a... Words, I agree with you. Words only have a given meaning in a, in a given context, okay? So whether it's only begotten or one and only son, it's irrelevant. The fact of the matter is it still talks about Jesus being crucified. No, no, it's not irrelevant. I think it's very relevant because... Look, if we look at the narration right itself, did Jesus want to die on a cross? Did he want to die? He said, I'm going to die. Right. And he, he, even, he said, I'm going to die. And, it, and he also said, I will be raised up. Right. So what was he doing in the Garden of Gethsemane? I was saying, now you're changing subjects. No, I'm not. Okay. It's, no. Do you, okay. Eli, Eli, rewind. let me ask back for No, 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 no. Rewind. 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 That's what you're the referring to. The reason why, no, no. Because you're saying to me in John 3, 14. Sorry, one. Sorry. Right. One second. Um, okay. Please, my camera, carry on, sorry. So, you're saying in John 3, 14, right? It says that the Son of Man shall be lifted, right? That's what you said, right? Lifted up. I can, lifted up. Now, I can say that this, is a, this can be ambiguous. And the reason why I say that is because when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, what was he asking God? Okay, can I go there? Okay, for one, it's not ambiguous if you take in the context of John's whole gospel. It, it would be ambiguous, I give you, if verse 14 existed alone, without context, and without any other passages, okay? But it doesn't. It exists within a book, within a given context, okay? And if you continue to read it, you see it's not ambiguous, because in John 19, we clearly see Jesus on the cross, okay? So it's not ambiguous with the given context. One second, okay? Now, you refer to uh, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, Eli, Eli, Lamar, Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
what's what's he? Sorry, did I bash you? Okay, okay. So when when he says those words, Eli Eli Lama Sabakfani, he's referring back to a psalm that says what? What does that psalm say? Okay, and, uh, all, all, just, all, yeah, all due respect, okay, you, I know you, you have this belief, but the fact that you're bringing this argument up, but you don't even know where Jesus is referring to, no, one, he's one, referring sec to one, one second, one okay, second, no, let me answer, let me answer, I'm being respectful, okay, the very fact you're bringing up this argument, then when I ask you, okay, where does that saying come from, because that saying itself has a given context, I know. one second, you're then saying, well, I don't know where it's found, so you, which would presuppose, no, no. one second, no. that, one second, no, no. stop, 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 that's what you just said, okay, which presupposes you don't know what that psalm's talking about, because if you continue to read that psalm, Okay, imagine this. I'm in church. Okay. One sec no no, one what second. Psalms one one second, one second. Imagine this. I'm in church, yes? And let's say I'm in church and I and I stand up and I say, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Okay? okay Ev one second. Every Christian in that church would be able to finish what I'm saying and they would understand the context in which I'm saying it, okay? So when Jesus says, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakfani, okay, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me in English, yes? He's referring back to a psalm, and if you continue to read the psalm, he's talking about, he's talking about a, uh, it's a messianic prophecy, basically. So what's Jesus doing there? He's doing this in front of a Jewish audience who know the psalms, so when he does this, he's doing this in front of a Jewish audience, and they will know, their mind will go back to this psalm, where Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakfani comes from, and they will recognise what's taking place. Okay, what psalm is it? Let's read it, let's go there. Let's pull it. Let's pull this arm up. What song? Psalm twenty-two. I'll tell you. Let's do my Bible quicker. I struggle with technology. Okay, so Psalm twenty-two. And this, is, this, this says the same thing as the words of Christ, as you just said. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so, so far from my deliverance and from my words of groaning? My God, I cry, day by, uh, I cry by day, but you do not answer. By night, yet I have no rest. But you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you rescued them. They cried they cry to you and you set them free. If you continue to read, okay, you get to verse with his hands and pierced pierce, Pete. Right, but, exactly he was, but he was the only person on the cross after having his hands and feet pierced that talks about this psalm uh, being fulfilled in him. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. What do you suppose? We've just gone through that. You can come next if you like. No, 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 no. no. You, know, you, you, like, you like to churn in. I've seen you on YouTube. You like to jump in debates. If you fancy yourself as a debater, feel free to jump in. No, no, when you're done, when you're done. You can jump in after, that's fine. So that, so that, he, he could, I know he could do it with you, man. Okay, right. can, what, I, can, can I, so, can I, can I, I, I like yeah, 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 sure, can I say one thing? Um, let's go for another two or three minutes, because uh, the lady's got my camera, and she doesn't know how to use it, she's a Luddite. So give, give me a, let's wrap this up. Okay, so let me just respond to something. Listen, don't change any settings. Right. Stay there. If you want to go, go. Okay. Stay there. But, me, yeah. I, I, but, but, but address the point that you're the, 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 the saying you're the saying you're trying to use of Christ to refute to refute the crucifixion that he was saved actually points to Jesus having his hands and feet no, pierced. No, it doesn't. So it doesn't say that. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying it doesn't say that. Let me just at least respond to some of the stuff you said. So, no, no, you're not just saying that. Is that is it? You want to respond? Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to respond. Look. Okay. Okay. Just wait. Just. just just leave it, go on. Right. We've established, right, that when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he did not want to die on a cross, right? He did not want to die on a cross because he was asking God to save him, right? He said that his, his tears were like blood and sweat. And Jesus said in the Gospel, I think in Matthew chapter 7, he says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Whenever Jesus makes a prayer to God, God always answers his prayers, yeah. right? He always answers his prayers because he is the Messiah. He is someone that's close to God. And whoever asks, whoever asks of God, God will grant him that prayer, right? So I find it very strange that Jesus was asking God to be saved and God ignored him. That's the first point. The second point I'd like to raise is that you're telling me you pointed to what the uh, Psalm 22. chapter twenty two twenty two twenty two. It's not, Lord, it's not Psalm Lord. chapter twenty two. It's just Psalm twenty two. Chapter twenty two, right? Whether you take that in isolation, whether you include that, it still the, the, the problem still remains, right? That Jesus was saying, "Why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me?" If you go back to the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was asking to be saved, 
it fits in context that when he was asking to be sent, hold on, I did, I was patient with you. So listen to what I have. I did not say a word. Good. Good. I didn't say anything. No, I, can, I, can, I can just tell that. Go ahead, it's, carry on. It's coming out. Carry the spirit on. Spirit just wants to leash yeah. out. Right. Anyway, anyway, back to what I was saying. Right. Make this last. Okay, did this. No, you're right. Your last point, my last point, we're done because I need to help Kay with my he camera. Needs to go. My if you want to go. Sorry? I said, do you want to answer or you want to go? I'm going to answer and then I'm okay. going to go because I need to help Kay with my camera. Carry on. Listen, if you're in a rush, I'm not stopping you. No, I'm letting you finish. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll reply. I'll right, reply okay. and then I'll go. Right. So it fits in context. It fits in context that Jesus is saying, why have you forsaken me? Because he made the prayer in the garden not to die on the cross. Even though we both know that in Matthew chapter 7, it says that God will always answer the prayer of the believers. Right? Whatever, so, like, as, as Jesus himself said. Can I say something? It doesn't say, the Bible does not teach that every prayer will be answered. Oh, so God will reject Jesus, is that no, what you're saying? No, there are times when, son. you can come next, my mate. Okay, there are times, there are times in the Bible where even, pro if you stay around, you'll listen, you can come next. I'll give you a biblical education, come. Listen, there are times in the Bible where, there are times in the Bible where prophets pray and God doesn't answer them. There, there's times for that. Jesus said, my father always answers me. Did he say I'm not ready? This is the guy who his own comment section on Black Dunya actually says he needs to go away and study more. But yeah, I'm not ready for you. Yeah, I can prove it in a minute. Hold on. I, I can in a minute. Hold on. No, no. People are saying about you, even your own Muslim brothers are saying you shouldn't be debating because you don't know what you're talking about. That's fine. I don't know that. I saw you respond to them. So don't, don't pretend you don't know it's there because I saw you respond to them. What does that prove? Carry on. Sorry, People one say that about Carry on, carry on. Anyone. Carry on. You always get hate Listen, you can come next. You get hate if, you're that, if you're that you're desperate to debate it. me, you can come next. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No problem. Answer, Go ahead. Answer. Right. The Bible says that the Father always answers Jesus' prayers, right? And I will find it. doesn't say he always. Listen. See, yeah, no, 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 no. Does it does actually no. say No, no, no. One, one second. Because what, okay, what does Jesus say? The Father did answer Jesus' prayer. Why did he? One second. Because you're only quoting part of what Jesus said. What did Jesus say? What, what, did, Jesus, what did Jesus say? Not my, not my will, but your will be done. Okay. So he submitted his will to the Father. Right. Does Jesus love, does the Father love Jesus? When you love someone, Notice oh, we're changing wait, wait, subject oh, from Psalm 22 to this. Oh, what you've done is you're changing goalpost every time. Hello? Right. When you love someone, right, do you do things that's in the interest of that person when you love someone? Especially when it's come to death. Right. So, <laughs> if you was in a situation yourself and you had, to, if you had someone who was able to help you but chose not to help you, right, and he was someone that loved you, would you claim that person loves you? Okay, let me respond. Okay, so your whole argument is that Jesus was here, helpless, he didn't want to go on the cross, he's asking God to help him, and God's ignoring him. Actually, what Jesus, one second, what Jesus does say is this, he says, Jesus, this is the words of Christ, you, you're quoting Christ, let's quote all of Christ. Christ also says, um, no one takes my life, I give it freely, and I will raise it up again. That's a contradiction then. No, okay. it's not a contradiction. So if he gives it, okay, hold on. If he's saying that he gives it freely, why was he asking? Why was he asking God in the Garden of Gethsemane that he wanted to be saved? Why was Jesus asking God to be saved? Sorry, I'm keeping an eye on the camera. Your excuse. I'm keeping an eye on the camera. Carry on. No, no, no. He, the camera was about to be knocked over. Carry on. Right. You said that Jesus lays down his life freely, right? That's so, what he said. Right. So if he died, so if he was asking God not to die on the cross, clearly from, from what you said, he said not, not by my, my will, but your will be done. Yeah. yeah. Then my question is to you, is that why would he ask God not to die if he gives it freely? That's a contradiction in terms. Obviously. That's like me saying to you that you have a squared circle or you, could, or you can have a married two totally different two, statements. They're two separate statements. Opposite so, statements. So, That's all a contradiction. This, another point I would like to raise. You're making 50 points, no, come on. No, my, my friend. Can, can we, can we, can we, no. one, one second. But do, 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 no, do you now acknowledge, one, one second, one second. It's been lovely speaking to you too. I have enjoyed this, okay. Um, but do you, but well, that's better than mine. Let's just wrap up here, okay. So ultimately your argument is Jesus wasn't crucified because he says this, I, no, no, no. one second, I, I listen to you. And then when I show you that no, actually, one second, then when I show you that actually Psalm 22, which, you're, you, which you referred back to when you said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that refers back to Psalm 22, one second, which if you continue to read the context, is talking about hands and fears, uh, feet being pierced. It talks about the crucifixion, okay? And this happens at the cross. When Jesus says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, he's quoting, 
he's quoting uh, from Psalm 22, verse 1, okay? So it's like me saying, amazing, one second, it's like me saying, amazing grace has to be the sound. Everyone's going to know the context. So when Jesus says this to his Jewish audience, yeah. everyone is going to know that context, okay? So the context of that passage is, Jesus was referring back to this Psalm, which prophesies a crucifixion that will take place, which was fulfilled at the crucifixion, John 19, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I know you would disagree, but that's where we, that, that is where we're disagreeing. That's what the whole discussion is yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So but, uh, I'll, I'll say, I'll say one second. I would say maybe we can have a follow up. I would say take. I would, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Take the accounts of Christ being crucified, okay, and then read Psalm 22. But also read Isaiah. One second. One second. Read Isaiah 53 because Isaiah 53 is so clear about the crucifixion, okay, that even the man who buries Jesus. Who was the man who buried Jesus? Joseph of Arimathea, he was a rich man. Now Isaiah was written 700 or so years, Jesus one second, one second. G Isaiah was written seven or so hundred years before Christ was born, okay? Now, this, wow. uh, this Isaiah 53, this, uh, this Isaiah 53, okay, uh, is so clear and precise about prophesying about the crucifixion, okay? That if you read uh, Isaiah 53, it, it actually says, it prophesies even the man who's going to bury Christ, okay, which is Joseph of Arimathea. It says that a, ri it says that a rich man, will bury him, and when you get to uh, the Gospels, you see that Joseph of Arimathea is called a rich man, and then he buries Jesus. So the crucifixion account is clear in the Old Testament, clear in the New Testament, but I've enjoyed the conversation. I appreciate it. What's your did name? You, did Jesus see his offspring? What's your name? Hamza. Hamza, I'm Ben. Did I'm Jesus ben. see his offspring? Okay, now you're talking about the uh, particular passage that talks yeah. about you believe the Messiah will have children, okay? No, no, no it's no, not what, what I believe. One, one what the see, Isaiah, did the Jews accept that? Yeah, yeah. they accepted it. Jesus accept that statement? Yes. As for being Jesus? No, they don't. No, no, no. They accept it's a messianic prophecy, but they believe it's to be fulfilled, not yet fulfilled. Okay, but thank you. Yeah, I need to go. Thanks. I appreciate it. What's your name? Hamza. Hamza, I'm Ben. I've been enjoying it. Yeah, definitely. You've been a gentleman. Thank you. Oh, yeah, good. Sorry, sir. Okay, so we've basically seen from the discussion with Hamza and the gentleman before, but in particular Hamza, he basically um, made claims that Jesus wasn't crucified because Jesus Christ said, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. Okay, which actually points back to Psalm 22, which if you read Psalm 22, it's talking about the prophecy of the crucifixion. It talks about his hands and his feet being pierced, which happens at the cross. Okay, there's a fight, sorry. It talks about this happening at the cross. So when Jesus says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, it's like me standing up in a church and saying, amazing grace has to meet the sound. Every Christian will know what I'm referring to. So when Jesus said this to his Jewish audience, they would have understood he's talking about this particular psalm, which talks about hands and feet being pierced, which happened at the cross, okay? It doesn't get any clearer than that. Um, I forgot what else he said, but it was also a load of nonsense. God bless.